Hi, Bexters! It's Rebecca here, back to the show with a new recipe. And this one is fresh and meaty. And yes, I have committed to this voice for the rest of the video. I'm sorry. Today we're making the most simple, easiest chicken breast in the universe. Let me run down on the things that you guys need to make this. You need some oil, some black pepper, some minced garlic, and some salt. You can use any other salt that you want, but I'm just using Himalayan pink salt. Ah! Ah! How could I forget? You need the chicken! So there's no set amount for any of these ingredients. It just depends on how big your chicken breasts are. It also depends on what you like, you know? A little bit more salty, a little bit more spicy. <laughs> Go crazy. <laughs> so let's move the spices out of the way. So the first thing you need to do if it's not done already is kill the chicken. And I know, I know, it can be a little bit heartbreaking a little bit sad, but it makes it better for the chicken if you sing it its favorite lullaby and then you sit by it every night and comfort it while it still lives. And then when it's that day, you read it its favorite bedtime story and you wrap your hands around its neck and you just quickly... And then it's all over for them and they don't even feel it. Hopefully that's already been done for you. We have boneless, skinless meat. So you Dumbo's don't want salmonella, right? Yeah, me neither. We don't want to cook it while it's frozen. So what you want to do if it's not thawed already, slap that sink over, close the drain, put that hot water, it's not hot yet. You have to wait till it gets hot. Okay, so I'm only going to be cooking one chicken breast. Um, you can do as much as you want, but you just dip it in. Exciting. So while that sad piece of meat is floating in the sink, I'm gonna get out a plate. And I'm gonna take one paper towel and place it on the plate. That's where our chicken is gonna go, and then we're gonna pat it dry. Mm. Welcome back, Bexters. I missed you guys so much. You have no clue. So it's been about 10 to 15 minutes and the meat is really squishy and it feels warm to me. So it's time to drain the water. Got my sleeve wet. The next step is to take the chicken out of the Ziploc bag and wash it. Just a little rinse, it's all good. It'll get baked anyway. Next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna slap that puppy onto a plate with a napkin on it and pat it dry. Sometimes this can get a little bit too exciting. So the chicken is pretty dry. It's okay if it's a little bit damp, you know, just, nobody's perfect. Make sure to wash your hands after you touch the chicken always. Make sure you scrub your nails. You gotta be mindful about what you touch after you touch the chicken because you don't want bacteria spreading everywhere. I mean, it's not gonna turn into a pandemic or something, <laughs> luckily. Next thing you're gonna do is take a sheet of saran wrap, set it on a table, place the chicken on the saran wrap, and put another sheet of saran wrap on the chicken. So what we're doing right now is we're gonna try beating the meat to make it completely flat so that when you bake it, it bakes evenly because you don't want the thick parts to get raw and the thin parts to get overcooked. That would just be a terrible, terrible combination. So since I don't have a beat meter, eat meter, meat beater, or whatever you call it, a meat stick, I don't know, you can use a roller, a pan, uh, a plate, I guess. I wouldn't advise a plate, but you can use anything that's heavy and hard to flatten it out. For me, I'm using a medium-sized pot. So the trick is to hit it down and outwards towards the thinner parts. Let me demonstrate. Like that. Just a little smooth whatever maneuver thing that is. Sometimes when you're beating your meat, you have to have the right mindset. Like for example, 
whenever I beat down my chicken, I have the mindset of my husband cheating on me with multiple women and men. But that's why I have my cats. So as you can see, it's all flattened out. I think I did a little bit too much flattening because, you know, sometimes my mindset is a little bit stronger than, than I think. So now that you have this, we're gonna take out uh, the pan thing. I don't know the word for it. And then we're gonna spray it down. I'm gonna be using this avocado oil spray. Just spray around there and then take out your meat. Put it on there. And now we're gonna get the spices going. Put a little bit of oil, rub around there. Flip it. Oh my God. And you can put any spices that you want. I'm just using these ones because I am so lazy. So first I'm gonna put on the, the minced garlic. I'm using about half a teaspoon. Spread that around there. Pick some off, flip it and yeah, do that, flip it. Does it look like I know what I'm doing yet? Next, we're gonna put on some black pepper, some salt. Okay! Preheat your oven to 450 degrees. So the oven just beeped uh, and it is hot. So I'm gonna put this chicken in here for about 15 minutes uncovered. Okay, let's see how it's turning out. Um, I think it's okay. Also, we can't forget to flip it. Oh my God. Uh, don't worry, the smoking is just the avocado spray. I hope. It's been 15 minutes. Okay, and the next thing we need to do is just cut it and see if it's white on the inside. Pretty cut. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes and it's cooled down and we're gonna try it. Are you ready, Bexters? Oh. It's actually not bad. <laughs> I mean, I expected it to be this good. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I'm not a failure!